Hello and welcome to the show. We are here today on Forza Horizon 4 with another team adventure. Now, for this one, we are racing C class cars. However, all of the vehicles had to be fitted with sport tyres. Now, that actually throws in some. I say conundrums when it comes to building because, well, the sport tyres take up a lot of PI. You honestly are very unlikely to ever run them in a C class car. So it's going to be curious to see what happens, really, with, uh, with, with this lot. I've built a Capri. It's rear wheel drive. I don't know if it's going to be any good. I mean, snow is a mean weather condition and season to do this in. Winter is a mean season, not snow season. You know what I mean. Shut up. Uh, it's, it's tougher for the cars, of course, because, well, when we go off-road, it is skiddy as well. Uh, or more skiddy than normal. So, But everyone's in the same boat. There may be a few all-wheel drive cars. All-wheel drive sport tyres and C-class is rarer, shall we say. There may be a few, though in this that, uh, that have gone for that. We will have to wait and see how things how things pan out really. Oh, we're going to bounce a little bit too much over the inside. Uh, can I do anything about overtaking a transit? I'm hoping so really. Uh, possibly we can get to the inside. Nope, not through there we can't. Uh, <laughs> Points are looking good for us, at least. That is something. In fact, Bluetooth, we've got a big old block of cars at the back that are not really enjoying life all too much. We will get the transit here. There we go. That is me up a position. Can we go chasing after the Fiat? The an MG? I think it's an MG. There's a Bentley. Uh, we should be maybe okay for top speed. I'm not actually sure, to be honest. We have 100 and... 90 horsepower, 180 horsepower, something like that, in there. So it's not too bad. I mean, okay, it's not crazy, crazy amounts of power. This is a weird, as I said, this is a really weird way to have to try and build a car. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit on the on the odd side. Oh, the MG looks like a handful, even with the sport tires. That thing's sliding around all over the place. Uh, we're going to have a dive up the inside here. We will get that position hopefully. Now the Capri doesn't get particularly big tyres uh, on this one but it's only a C-class, it's okay. It's quite well balanced actually. Right, we are catching up to the group of cars ahead. Oh, it's very wide for that Bentley. I see, I've never really got on the four and a half litre Bentley. I love. Fantastic. I have a wonderfully quick B-class one. The eight litre Bentley I've never been able to get work. We've seen a few people try it and it's struggled. This does seem to be working relatively well. You know. It is doing a relatively relatively good job. Okay, it's just lost a place to the uh, the little above, but uh, still. Can I do anything about these? I mean the Abarth I think might be the quickest car on the track. Certainly both me and the Abarth are catching the mini that is leading the way. Uh, we're going to chuck it through here, it's just to hear the squeal from the tyres as we go through there. The MG's falling back into the clutches of the limo and whatever else might be back there. Uh, can we oh, dive through that checkpoint? We do. The Bentley's got to run on the f a bath, but the Bentley's messed it up. I uh, Yeah, I see what was going for there. I see the plan, it just didn't quite work in the end for the Bentley. just didn't have the grip to make that one work. Here comes the Capri of well, hopefully more straight line speed than two cars ahead of us. If I can get them on the straight, that makes my life ten times easier. Sit in a slipstream. Oh, the Abarth is going to cut the bigger hole in the air. Here we go. <laughs> the Mini wants to come across, but it's not going to be able to do it because the Capri is coming way too quickly here. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> the Capri is going up into a second position as well. Oh, turn one is where it's going to happen, I think. If it's going to happen on that Abarth. We had a little go. Probably should have backed out of that one. The Mini's going to have a look. I'm hoping the Mini realises is a little unlikely to make that work through there. Thankfully it does. Bentley's regrouped in fourth. I mean, Red Team have got a 1-2-3 at the moment, which is what we want. 1-2-3, uh, you are guaranteed to win the round, regardless of what happens elsewhere, the way the point system works. I've had a really bad lap. I think the Abarth is going to get away. Yeah, I needed a good lap. We needed a, a spot-on lap, really, so we could be in place to try and have a dive at turn one. As it is, it's been scruffy. We're not 
We're not going to get it this lap at turn one. If we can get a perfect lap next time around, we may be close enough to outdrag it to the line. But the 131 is not slow. That much is sure. It's not slow down this straight. Where is the limo? There's a limo somewhere. I think Battle Grey in fifth place back there still. Yeah, so we're nowhere near close enough to have a go at turn one. It's a bit, it's a bit painful. It's a bit slow down these, uh, down these straights. Okay, let's go for that spot-on perfect lap. <laughs> no one's got wide tyres. Look at the tyres on the back of the, of of that one three one. No one's got wide tyres going on here. Oh, in these sort of cars, you just can't have it. You know, you get a muscle car. I think most muscle cars you put sport tyres on. You wouldn't even keep them in C class. So, yeah, you're gonna have these things with skinny little tyres. Uh, oh, and while they're grippy tyres, there's still not a huge amount of grip. Uh, I think I threw it super. I was just desperately trying to get close to the car. Very, very evenly matched between these two. If I hadn't had that bad lap four, it might have been a different story. As it is, it's going to be close. It's just not quite going to be enough. Well, it is going to be a red team. It's going to be a red team 1 2. The limo's got itself up into third. Uh, fourth will go the way. Oh, I don't know what happened to the mini. Something happened. It dropped back. May have made a mistake somewhere. It's a second place for the Capri. Very, very close. Me and that bath are very, very similar in terms of pace. Get our speed a little differently, but not crazy differently. Oh, the Corrado gets up to fourth in the end of all of that. Regardless, red team will take the first round victory. So, up next, Broadway Village Scramble. So, yes, this is an off-road circuit. I think actually as far as snow, as far as winter-based off-roading goes, this is probably one of the least egregious. It's a small section of dirt, and I don't know how much snow is actually really on that particular bit. I guess we will find out very shortly. I think we were starting mid-pack. Uh, the long straight will be good for us, I think. Be good for the limo as well. Uh, let's go see what happens, really. Uh, <laughs> the limo being very heavy in front-wheel drive doesn't get off the line all that well, but I know they're good cars. Uh, we can wool allure as well. And yeah, I know they're good cars. Uh, I have one that uh, I think mine was C-Class as well. Built slightly differently, of course, because we haven't got the tyre regulations, but uh, yeah, they can be actually surprisingly, surprisingly good. Um, I mean, great start for Red Team here. We are one, two, three, four. <laughs> More could you ask for? Uh, the front wheel drives now. Not everything has to stay with its standard drive line, so cars could be converted. Um, anything all wheel drive, of course, will be good out in the dirt because no one's going to have tyre advantage. Front wheel drives will be a little bit better than the rear wheel drives out here. So if you have got front wheel drive, that will be good for you there. But it is only a small dirt section. I don't know if I've got anything to do with that <laughs> that can deal with that a bath around here. That might be a little too quick for me. Transit's certainly shifting. Oh, God, get on the brakes. That's a terrible, terrible corner by me. I turned in way too soon and it's got all sorts of wrong through there. Okay. Let's try and rectify all sorts of wrong. Who has straight line? No, so the Bentley can have a good chunk of power, but its aerodynamics are garbage, basically, as will the Transit's be. The Mini won't have the power of the Capri. Is it going to be three wide into turn one? No, but I would like to buy into this fight if at all possible. Don't really want to sit behind them and wait to get passed by the bloody Bentley and Limo and all of that brigade. Transit's out wide. The problem is the Transit might have troubles fighting with the Bentley and co. Yeah, right. On to the gravel we head. Yeah, that bath that looks very, very good on the gravel. So that a little bit more composed than than my car, which is something. Oh, now, through these next couple of corners we go. Nicely does it for my vehicle. It is. Can I do... I guess get a good line. If I get a good line through the final corner, we'll be okay. That's what we need. I need to not run a million miles wide through here like I did last time. A little mile wide is okay. It's still not really great, though. A little too wide. Yeah. I don't know why I can't get that final quarter right. Oh, we might have to be defending soon. <laughs> Better be concerned about that, Bentley. It has certainly got some pace about it. Yeah, it doesn't quite have the top end to match. I mean, we do 120 odd down here, and Bentley has not got an answer for that one. In fact, not too many cars do, I wouldn't think. The limo might be able to beat me. Because that, that thing's weirdly good in, in Forza, and that 
will have a good chunk more power than me. Just takes a while to be able to kind of use it. Uh, if I could stay close to the mini it's through here, we're so slow. I just can't care. I'm better this lap around. Oh, well, I don't know whether I'm better or whether the minis had more trouble, but it's coming out of this section here is where we have to be good and stay close to that mini, which we are this time around. Where is that big Bentley? Still there or thereabouts? Coming up the hill, the, bent uh, the mini pulls away. It's just the lightness of that car working wonders for it. Right, can I get this corner right? I do... I don't get it very fast, though. The Bentley was a lot wider than I was. Oh, it's tantalising is what we've got going on at the moment. We're kind of close to getting in a position where we might be able to try and overtake. It's by the end of the straight, really, is where we're going to be getting into that position. Which the Mini's acceleration is so much. But it looks like the Abarth is long gone and just out of the fight here. It doesn't have to worry about any of the shenanigans going on back here. How brave dare I be on the brakes in the turn one. I mean, I think I have race brakes on this. And generally speaking with my cars, they will have race brakes. It's just a case of... Yeah, we're going to go put the brakes on. And one of the first upgrades I'll do because I want to be able to stop as well as possible. I can't remember what suspension I put this car on. I think I might have put it on race, which probably was a bad idea. I guess it's more focused on... I kind of figured that all-wheel drive things would dominate uh, out here. So... Focus on being quick in the tarmac bits. But... Maybe I should have gone with the rally suspension and just not lost as much time. Because as I said, we're all on, we're all on the same compound of tyre. It's just, I cannot make any changes to this gap. And the same is going on behind us. This is the thing, we're in one of those battles where everything is equidistant and nothing's going on. Um, Eccentric's got ahead of uh, Helium Van and they're just sort of sat there, not quite able to do anything. Yeah, Argus's Bentley has just been sat there. I think maybe I'm pulling away a little bit from it, but it's not very much. Come on, Capri. You can do this. We're closer than we have been. It was a good... It was a good guesswork. Oh, the Bentley's in the wall at turn one. It was a good guesswork on the brakes through there. And we can close up so much. And we are right there. The Mini's actually in a little bit of trouble this time around. This is good news for us here. Could it be a final lap pass? We slide the Capri to that second place. We will oh, end up in the way of the Mini, but this is where the Mini is so very, very quick. It's just so good up this hill. Uh, we are ahead, though. We may well have to defend into the final corner. Uh, where is the Mini going to go? We'll chase it across the road, although it's still got the acceleration to get to the door. Uh, we will try and sweep around the outside. It's still there. It's not going to quite do it. Now, it gets the initial acceleration on me, but I don't think it's quite a long way to the start-finish line. The top end of the Capri should be enough to have snuck a second place on the final lap. Just a little mistake from the Mini is all it took. After a few infuriating laps of being set, not really being able to do anything, yeah, just a little slide. Just a little slide on the dirt. A little too much <laughs> for the Mini. We'll take that second place away. So one, two, three, four, a red team. Uh, blue cars were not far down. That much is uh, is for sure. The Transit got sixth in the end. Behind the Bentley and the Caddy with the MGB up in seventh. Oh. That was another very enjoyable race. Can't match the Abarth, but a good race. We are off to the Prince's Street Garden Circuit next. It is snowing, however, the track itself, thankfully, is beautiful tarmac. Oh, game! <laughs> I put me, the Mini, and the Abarth all the way at the back. Oh, the Bentley, Caddy, they're all further up. The MG, I don't know how that's going to be around around this circuit. Uh, yeah, I guess we're going to have some overtaking to do. We are going to have some overtaking to do. We'll find out how good our... Capri actually is. We've got a lot of overtaking because we are stone dead last. We launched better than the CRX mine. <laughs> and uh, front wheel drive. Front wheel drive is actually quite fast in this game, certainly in the lower classes. A class it works. S1 is a bit ambitious. Um, but yeah, front wheel drive is actually pretty good in, in Horizon 4. Oh, sadly, from so far back, I've not really been able to make the most of ghost mode or anything here, so I don't think we're going to be winning this round. It would be uh, quite difficult to do that when you've got so many cars to try and overtake. The 3000 goes... Well, it goes defensive on the way in. Oh, tries to have a go at the limo that's a little bit in the way. And in the end, has let a Capri sneak past a whole bunch of cars. Good work, uh, Ford. We found a gap. We had the speed to make that 
Let's save the gap of work. And we are up a good way, actually, through the order. We'll sweep around the outside of the Corrado. That is our teammate in this one. We might even get the Firebird on the exit here. Don't really want to be too wide, although I think we're going to pass it before we even get to the corner. We do. Oh, there's some red team cars fighting. As far as first laps go from that grid spot, I couldn't actually ask for much better there. We have carved our way through the field. Ah, oh, the limo missed a checkpoint. That's a shame. Uh, <laughs> I know the limo was in battles a lot there, but uh, yeah, it's always a shame when you end up missing a checkpoint. Easily done and all that. We are up to fourth here. What do we... I mean, if I want to beat the Abarth, if I want to beat the Bentley, we have to get the transit and have to do it quickly. Okay, well, there will, there will work. I don't know whether the transit was giving us space, knowing we're quicker. It may well have done, in which case, thank you. It may have just missed its brakes a little bit and run wide. I, I think, judging by the line it was, I think there might be to just release the faster cars. Uh, which is, I mean, it's a teammate, so it is always much appreciated. Can we chase down the Abarth around this track? Oh, that's the first kind of big slide and upset I've seen from that Fiat. Uh, it really really has looked planted so far. Uh, what can I do? I don't think anyone's got an answer for the Bentley. The Bentley's crappy aero doesn't really affect it around this track. You don't really have long enough straights. So its acceleration is good. Its top end doesn't really matter. I mean, we would probably barely get a crack 100 down these straights, and the Bentley's fine with that. It's pretty even between them. I think we are catching it. It's just, we might catch it on the final lap, but even then, that's going to be ambitious with catching it in this time. But we've had a good run up the hill. The Bentley's made a mistake. Okay, well, we're going to catch it a lot sooner than that now. Yeah, Bentley just ran wide, I think, and hit a wall. What can the Abarth, what can the Capri do? It's just Capri I'm relatively happy with. I mean, given the confines of this series, given the rule set for the cars, uh, and having never had any luck with Capris whatsoever relatively happy with this, I must say. Uh, we are going to try and be brave through here. Not miss a checkpoint, but be as greedy as we can possibly be, because the Abarth is good through this section. It's had a good lap, actually. Uh, it, the Abarth senses a chance at another victory, and it is going for it. Uh, the Abarth, if Abarth wins this, it'd be 3 out of 3 for it, I think? It's quick. I might be able to alter that. <laughs> the Bentley might be able to alter that. Now, this is a track you can defend around. Uh, it's difficult to pass, and if you've got the straight line speed, you can just make super wide car. The Bentley is going to make life awkward for the Abarth, but not awkward enough. That's a great pass. That's a fantastic pass for the lead of the race. The Bentley may just fire it up the inside to try and make something happen here. The issue I'm going to have is if if I get caught behind... Oh, here comes that Bentley's power. If I get caught behind this battle, if I get caught behind the Bentley and the Abarth escapes, then I will be done for. The Bentley is definitely going to send it up the inside through here. The Abarth backs out of it a little bit. Oh, we might end up fighting each other. You see, I want to be in. I want to be in second because I want to be in first in line to overtake the Bentley. But if we fight each other too much, the Bentley wins, and I'd rather a teammate win the race than the Bentley. We all get stacked up around the final corner. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a hell of a final lap. I have straight line speed on the 131. I have straight line top end speed on the Bentley. Anyone going to go for a dive at turn one? Bentley parks it in the middle of the road. Uh, we are on the outside of the Abarth. If we can make this work. Oh, the Abarth actually has lifted and just led us gone through there. Uh, <laughs> the Abarth is giving me a chance. I better not squander this one. Uh, I better not squander this at finding a way past the Bentley. Uh, come on. Come on, Capri. You can do this. It's going to have to be maybe even the final corner this might come down to. Because I know that big boat can't turn as well. I know it can't, but it's got that, that initial drive off the corner is really strong. I might have needed more than one lap to do it, but we'll have to wait and see here. Oh. Can we? We've got to set this up here. We've got to be absolutely perfect through this next corner. This is where it matters, Capri. We're quick, but the Bentley is quick as well. Can we send it anywhere here to try and get a pass done? We can't. Oh, it's going to be a battle to the line. The Bentley's going to do it, though. The Bentley will hold on. Oh, and one more lap is what we needed. I just caught too late. Typical, I said at the start, I wasn't going to be fighting for the lead. I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. We caught it a little too late. Oh, what a fantastic race. <laughs> what a fantastic race, indeed. The Abarth. Um, 
put up a really, really bloody good fight. I think both me and the Abarth were very quick around there. The Bentley just had the acceleration. As I said, you can defend around that circuit because there's only really a couple of places you can get a pass done if you've got that acceleration car. Whew. That was bloody good fun. <laughs> that was bloody good fun indeed. We are back off-road for the next round. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to do so well here because this is pure, pure off-road. Oh, it's pure snow, basically, is what we're racing on here with a rear-wheel drive Capri and sports tyres. I'm not going to be the only one in all sorts of trouble, but still. Uh, if we can score some solid points, I think actually Red Team have won overall. I haven't paid any attention to... <laughs> I've been having far too much fun racing and I've forgotten the aim of all of this. Like, we've been winning the rounds, so I think we've won, I think we've won enough points overall. Um, right. I will, will allure if someone else does. I believe that is the rules. Oh, okay. Capri, not so good for this part. Uh, the front-wheel drive cars, they will be better. Um, let's see, everyone's got similar conundrums in terms of tyres. But uh, yeah, the front-wheel drive traction is generally a little bit better uh, in this. Oh, Capri is not good on the snow, I can confirm. Capri is really bad on the snow. Uh, blue team have definitely got the better cars for this. Oh, although I say that, uh, <laughs> the Trans Am boy are away and an eccentric in a tree. <laughs> I mean, that tree has claimed many a victims over the months and years of uh, Horizon 4 races. Stevie found a wall to visit, and then I found the CRX. Oh, God, the car is garbage out here. Uh, mine is really not good. The Capri is not enjoying life. I'll take the old Chris line around the back of the tree. Um, yeah, the Capri is terrible out here. <laughs> Come on, though, Ford. We can get the Corrado again. I think the transit leading is all-wheel drive uh, in this one. But, uh, yeah, anything with all-wheel drive is going to be in a big advantage around this circuit. The other circuits, it doesn't matter because none of these cars are really all that powerful, but here it does matter. I'm very sorry. I've got nothing... <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why this is so bad. I can't be the only rear-wheel drive sort of thing. I'm curious as to how the... Oh, how the Abarth has got so much bloody traction, because mine is next to useless. I mean, oh, I'm not deliberately being a moron with the car. It just doesn't have any grip. I know it's got thin tyres. The Abarth didn't have big ones, though. Uh, Corrado's in the wall a little bit through there. We're going to try and keep around the outside... The Firebird's got the pair of us, though, here. Although, don't go to the tree. Oh! Uh, I should have gone around the back of it. I thought I could sneak through the gap on that one. That was maybe a smidge ambitious uh, from me. I don't know if the Firebird knew I was quite going to be alongside. Not that it actually matters all that much for my car in this one. It was much outclassed here. Really much, much outclassed around this circuit. <laughs> I think the next couple of laps are going to be a smidge of a sideways session, barring the potential of someone missing a checkpoint, of course. That is always possible. You never know. You never know. Someone may miss a checkpoint, and then we could profit a position or two. Well, a position, I guess, if there's only one missing a checkpoint, but shush me. Oh, stop. Stop. Go in a line. Just forward. A direction, just don't sit and spin your wheels. Uh, someone else worse off than me, though. Oh, and then this is the downside. Oh, dear. <laughs> this is the downside. This is why you don't often see me. Oh, it's really going wrong for Red Team. We're not going to win this one. But this is one of the reasons why you don't often see me drive two crazy specialised cars in these team adventures. When you're covering multiple surfaces, but occasionally, from time to time, we turn up with something really wacky. Um, but, yeah, when we do these multi surface races, I like to have a car that's going to be competent everywhere. Because then the chances of me having exciting races, whatever the venue might be, are much higher. Oh, come on. Bloody hell. And for the sake of a video, I'd rather not have too many races where I'm just, well, driving around at 40 miles an hour and <laughs> not able to get up a hill. Uh, so yeah, I do tend to drive uh, more overall cars, all round cars, rather than these. I, I say this is a, probably a poor example because the rule set is a bit funky today, but... Yeah, rather than two crazy specialised cars, so that I'm more likely to be guaranteed and more likely to find uh, closer races, etc. Well, this car has been very good, you know, in the adventure itself. Oh, in most of the races, for this particular bit, not quite going to work. I'm not the only one struggling, though, all of them. You know, 
plenty of red team are not having a fun time around here. Oh, don't play with the tree, please. Uh, I don't actually know what... Oh, the MG's leading. The MGB is leading from the Transit, and the Bentley is third. The Abarth is doing well up in fourth, ahead of the limo, and Sideways Capri is sideways once more. I'm not last. I'm very sideways, and I think I think with Alpha at the back, of Alpha at the back might have parked. It might be... That's in hell. <laughs> this thing is awful. It really is shockingly bad through there. <laughs> just nothing in terms of grip. Well, our painful race is done and out of the way. Uh, the other off-road part of this adventure was a little bit kinder uh, to the to the Capri. Here it is shocking. Blue team are going to win. I don't actually think I'm going to finish. I think we're going to be that far back. We're going to dump out of this one. That's how difficult and how bad to drive this Capri was. Is in the snow. No, we're not going to do it. Okay, if we hadn't hit the tree, we would have made it, but it only just. There we go. That. Not a particularly good car for that. Blue team take a convincing round victory. We are on to the final round of this team adventure. The Broadway Village Circuit. Ah, at a nice spot on the grid. The 131 is buried a little bit further uh, in the pack. The Bentley also a little bit further down. Okay, if I can get past the Mini, we might be able to run away a little bit. This track's probably not going to be too bad for the Capri. And much as I said about the, the Prince of Street Circuit, this is, another, this is another track that, if you've got the car with acceleration, a little bit of top speed, isn't too bad to defend around. I wouldn't want to be stuck behind the Bentley here. That is for sure, but after about how quick the all-wheel drive Bentley launches. Uh, right. Turn one, not very good from me. Please stay in ghost mode. I don't want the Bentley sneaking up the inside. I want to be able to sort of cut across there as like a normal line. Don't know where the Bentley is. I think it's in ghost mode inside the Firebird. Oh, no, Bentley might have missed checkpoint at turn one. I think the Bentley cut too much to the inside and has gone to the back. Well, that threat is unfortunately for blue team, fortunately for me... And that threat is done for now. We've actually had a really good good start, yeah. And we've got two relatively quick cars for red team starting on the front. And a big old pack of maybe slightly slower cars for this sort of track anyway. Uh, between us and, well, the other quick cars, that is going to be very, very helpful. The Abarth is up to four. Actually, got one, two, three, four for red team at the moment. The Mini might be a pain in the ass to overtake here. <laughs> Because my top end doesn't really come into effect around this track. And the Mini's got clean air as well. well. We'll see what we can do. We might have to go for maximum bravery in the Capri. We certainly were brave at turn one. Debris got in the way of the car through there. Oh, there was a gap to the inside. I'll take that. I'll take that opportunity. Oh, don't hit the fence. Now, there's no need to hit the fence through there. My car's got more than enough grip. It's not going fast enough to really have any worries. Oh, that looks like... It might about be about to be a lag out for me. Uh, I think either that or it is gone. We have disconnected from what was an otherwise very, very good adventure. And that is the end of that one. And that would be the end of that. Sadly, we didn't get to find out what would happen in the final race because the game crashed. Although it crashed in a weird way because... Everybody crashed out of that one. Everybody had the same kind of game crash out that I did, which is an unusual one if it had been the host or I disconnected or something, but everyone had exactly the same crash. Um, a little bit of a shame, because it was going pretty damn well up until that point. My Capri was working good. I don't often get Capris to work, so relatively happy with that one. But, uh, yeah, I think technical problems did occur. That, though, is going to be it for this video. If you'd like to sign up to take part in the next one of these, you can via our Discord. There'll be a link in the description find the versus the community section and you can sign up in there that though is going to be it from me thank you all very much for watching and until next time a goodbye